Hello pottery friends! Welcome back! Another attempt at a pottery vlog. Uh, let's see if I can take you along with me this week. Um, what's up today? I have a bisque fire going. Maybe you can hear the fan in the background. It's, I don't know, probably too many roosters. <laughs> um, what you hear in the background is the fan that I have going to keep the uh, uh, electrical parts all cool um, but that has to fire it only at 180 degrees centigrade so it has a while to go I've been doing some reclaim I've wedged almost a whole bag <laughs> so my arms are a bit tired but you know it's part of the job for as long as I do not have a pot mill anybody have one? I would love one. Uh, what else is going on? I'm working on some new spoon rests. These have just got the well just <laughs> have their um, slips and I have I did carve can you tell yeah I did carve the designs but I um, have not carved away the negative space yet. There's another one I hope you can tell. Jellyfish. And there are a few more coming. I am working on a new shape of mug. You know my mugs. And I intentionally keep that shape simple. Because it's the Scrofito that I want to be, you know, the star of the, of the show. But then, you know, to keep it um, a little bit more exciting for myself. I was playing around with some different shapes yesterday. They are in the jimmy and hopefully we'll get their handles today. I'll see if I can get the camera rolling on that too. What else? I got a visit yesterday from a lady who contacted me. Well, her sister actually contacted me. They came in both. Uh, sadly, her husband passed away a few weeks ago and she wanted to order an urn. Uh, we talked and um, we came to a decision. I have some notes here. I'm not going to show you. So I will we'll be making uh, an urn for her beloved husband's ashes in the black clay. And uh, hopefully starting on that today. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, I've got this here. I, I believe it was Heidi who asked me a question. I just uploaded, today is Tuesday, I just uploaded a kiln opening. If you haven't seen that yet, it's, I will link it up here. And I think it's Heidi who asked me, well, what did you do with that brown vase with the flowers, with stroke and coat? I want to see how it comes out of the kiln. Well, here it is. It's still not fired. Um, I've been experimenting with stroke and coat. I have some, uh, can you tell here? Yeah, these are some tests. I've done some smaller vases. Um, however, Oh, hold on. Sissy is protecting us because my neighbor has just come with his big truck. Okay, let's continue. Um, what I didn't realize with the stroking coats, although I knew it, but I, I guess, you know, it didn't, it didn't, um, I don't know what the word is, but. Um, if you fire these in the bisque firing together with your other, you know, uh, stuff, this, because it's stroke and coat, is going to turn into a glaze at bisque fire temperature. And I usually pack my bisque kiln full. I stack things, I put things, pots inside pots, I put pots on top of pots, uh, as full as I can get it. I can't do that with this. So. I am still waiting for um, a bisque firing that is packed full enough that I can leave some space to have this sort of kind of separate in the kiln, not touching all the other ones, you know what I mean? I'm also debating whether I should maybe single fire this and take it up to con6 all at once. But that would mean I have to have other stuff that I can you know, 
take up to cone 6 all at once, which means you have to glaze things in the greenware state, which you can, it's not a problem. But I do not want to dip my Scrofito greenware in a bucket of glaze because it will dissolve. So I will have to brush on a glaze. I can do that with that glaze as well, but doesn't, you know, mm, uh, might do it with some other glaze. So, no, well. That's my dilemma. So that's why this one is not fired yet. It will be, but uh, I cannot tell you when yet, Heidi. I'm sorry. If you have any, you know, suggestions concerning this um, challenge, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you, especially from the from those of you who do use stroke and cuts uh, in a scrofito kind of way. Let me know how you do it. You know, maybe you can help me. I would appreciate it. I'll put it away before I break it. Um, I'm first going to continue with a few more spoon rests. Take you along with me. And uh, I will see you in the next clip. And see what happens this week. Bye for now. There it is. Uh, <laughs> and maybe you can tell it's getting dark and it's starting to rain. So I'm going to rescue my reclaim that it's out there. Hey there. Oh well, the sun has come out again. So I have a little bit more light here on my team. Ah. Let's let the truck pass. Um, yeah, a little bit more light under my roof, so I thought I'd show you because I have finished my um, spoon rests. I have five of them. This one. Of course, there have to be flamingos, you know. Whenever I have tourists in my pottery garden here they oh huh, I haven't finished yet <laughs> I started this one but it was still too wet I'll come back with that one gosh oh. um what was I saying oh yeah the flamingos they um, tourists of course love flamingos Bonaire is one of the five places on this planet where flamingos still breed um, one day I'll take you to a spot where I, I can show you some. And here's the finished, and you already saw that. Um, I think my brain is sort of kind of working uh, at 50% today. <laughs> I don't know. I'll finish up the blue one and get right back to you. Ooh. It's getting humid now. Oh, hold on. But it's the same one. <laughs> this time it was filled up. Never mind. Ah, it's getting uh, humid. You know, we had this beautiful, beautiful rain shower. 
we always love the rain except when it comes like it did last week uh, but when the sun then comes out all that moisture is of course not it's getting a bit difficult to breathe it'll be over in an hour so uh, not complaining uh, upside down plate right <laughs> I threw this one yesterday it's the black clay with white slip on the inside um, plan is this hence the kiln opening the, the this is from is this from my last kiln opening I think so I have some white clay on there now because it's on my hands look at that I'm going to get it up close and we'll see what happens in the um, when I edit it this is so so pretty well I think it's pretty <laughs> and I make them <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do on the inside of this one and then this will be all raw black clay uh, it's it's heavy it's got a lot here in the bottom because I want to trim out a foot it needs a little bit more drying so I'm going to put it out in the Sun and then I'm going to trim this one Morning. Another day at the pottery. The sun is out. There's a little breeze. Ah, another day in paradise. I get to play with clay. So yeah, I'm good. Um, what's up for today? Or what did I do yesterday? I didn't show you yet. You saw me make that shallow bowl. Bird feeder. A uh, bird feeder. Gosh four sentences in bird bath a small one and you saw me cut the 
the foot and I did some white slip on the bottom, signed my name. So this cannot dry. I also made a bird feeder. Sort of kind of the same concept. The black clay with white slip, quite thick and a little bit texture for that same place combination. Uh, hole on the top, hole on the front and the back to put a stick in for the birds to land on. Another one in the drying stage. And uh, I, d I made some test tiles. I thought I'd share with you how I make my flat test tiles. I make vertical test tiles and flat ones. I like the flat ones because they look good in the display. Here's one. Uh, I write on the back with underglaze in a fine tip trailer, slip trail, bottle thing. And this is uh, three times North Blue on white clay. I made a stamp. I slip trailed this onto a piece of clay, put a handle on it and bisque fired it. So now I just, you know, cut out circles on a piece of foam. I press them in, I press that stamp in, there is it, it's not even dry yet. And what I do is I take a piece of um, an old element from the kiln and I bend it into a hook. And I stick it in there while the glaze, the glaze, the clay is still wet. And as the clay shrinks, it'll be stuck in there. I uh, sometimes, you know, if the clay is a little bit too thin, it might crack. But so far, so good. And look, it's still. It actually is very much stuck in there. So that's well. That's what I did yesterday. You can see. Over there, the top of my kiln, or the lid of my kiln, is open. I did a bisque firing. It's cooling for the last 10 or 20 degrees. And I will be emptying that. And I will give you a view of what it looks like now. Because uh, what I said yesterday about the question about the pieces with the stroke and coat. Uh, if I show you how I pack my kiln, you will understand why that um, why I okay breathe <laughs> because of the stroke and coat turning into a glaze I can't stack it that's the short version let me take you to the kiln let me give you an overview of what it looks like and then I will get to work I got um, an order from the lovely Sarah hey Sarah Sarah Amos is from the Pottery Corner and she also has a YouTube channel uh, with lots of kiln openings and lots of student work. She's an amazing teacher. Her, her students make absolutely beautiful stuff. And she also has some nice tutorials on there. And she ordered a mug. So I'm working on that one. And um, it'll go to the United Kingdom. So, you know, if you see something you like and you're not living on Bonaire, which is very, very likely, I do ship internationally and up until now I have shipped to United Kingdom, US, Canada, Italy, Germany, Netherlands, of course, um, and not to Australia yet. So, you know, the ones from Sydney or Melbourne. <laughs> Uh, so far so good everything has always come to their doorstep in one piece uh, I take care of really packing it well uh, of course you know it uh, brings in a little bit extra costs but our postal service outward from Bonaire to all over the world is actually pretty good so if you like something if you see something send me a message and I will find out what the costs are and then you can decide whether you want to have something. Um, enough rambling. I'm taking you to the kiln and uh, we'll see what the rest of the day will bring. Well folks, I just showed you a picture and this is 
all of that which of course you couldn't see because they were all stacked inside and on top of each other so this is just the first layer in my kiln and because it, it's bisque I put uh, pots inside of each other and on top of each other and I have no problem because I know someone's going to ask with the, the slips sticking or uh, uh, leaving you know colors on other pots whatsoever sometimes in the glaze firing that happens but not in the bisque firing hey guys um, I did manage to get to work with the new shape but I trimmed them and I am now putting on some uh, slip it has been a while since I have uh, made black and white sofrito so I thought I'd do that also inspired by the shape totally different shape than what I used to make what I'm used to making trimmed cone shaped and of course a little lip I am going to do the black and white scraffito and a different color glaze inside and on the lip everybody this week has flown by it's Friday morning already <laughs> I have been in the studio off and on there were some other things that needed my attention as life goes you know and I've been um, back to studying I have been wanting to go back to making my own glazes for a while uh, especially now that you know the prices for shipping for me are extra important because I have to pay shipping twice you know uh, order my materials that have have to go to my freight forwarder <laughs> and then come to Bonaire these prices have gone up, up they skyrocketed like everywhere else in the world and um, so I've been thinking about it and thinking about it my studio is not that big uh, I'm sorting out where I'm going to have to put all the buckets and things like that but I thought I'd start with just two or three and then uh, so I took out all the raw materials that I still had and I'm now studying again looking at what I need to order and uh, well first saving up to make that order and then I'll be doing that uh, on the topic of freight forwarders oh, difficult to pronounce that word um, yesterday I got a message from one of them that I use for smaller packages that my package has arrived so exciting it is pottery related so I'm going to take you with me and go get that package later this morning 
and this morning my husband um, um, had had to order some materials for an upcoming job he said could you please I, I'm very busy could you please go over to them and go get me my stuff and I said sure baby I'll do that for you knowing that of course I was going anyway <laughs> I'm bad I know I'm bad <laughs> uh, of course I would have gone go get his package but yeah so um, today later today I'm going to go over there take you with me hopefully I'm um, thinking about some kind of construction to strap you <laughs> strap my phone somehow in the car well we'll see how that goes then I'll be back to studying again and finishing up some mugs and other things um, a little bit too much planned for one day so it will probably be spread out for um, over the next two three days uh, including the weekend still have to start all that urn so I've been postponing that because I also had a request for mugs we which are from my white clay and I still had everything on the wheel there in white clay so uh, yeah that's me babbling on without showing you anything. <laughs> I will later, I promise. Uh, but first, let's go get that package. Okay guys, I hope you can hear me. I have strapped you onto the seat next to me. And with the beautiful, beautiful polished roads we have here on Bonaire. Oh, hold on. I'm hoping you're seeing what I'm seeing. <laughs> Again, with the beautiful, polished, perfect roads on Bonaire. It might get to be a bumpy ride, so I'm hoping you won't slide down. where our let's call it the boulevard starts or ends depending on where you come from look at that beautiful water oh it's busy lots of sailboats I hope you can see the beautiful water this tree I hope you saw it it's called it's called our slipper bone which means flip-flop tree Many people hang their flip-flops there when they're done with them.
get our package for our hobby. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm making fun of him. Oh, it's nice and quiet. I like that. Let's park right in front of the door. There we go. He's on. Oh, here we go. Go get our package. Bon dia. Hello. I'm home. Look who's happy to see me. Hey! Hey! Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. Hi there. Hi, sissy. Oh, wagging your tail. Wagging your tail. Yeah. Go get a cookie. Woo! Guys, <laughs> just got home. Uh, the sad news is, as you can tell, this looks different than usual. I just spoke into my camera, tell you I was going to go out for the package. I came back, turned the camera on, and he doesn't want to talk to me anymore. So, I don't know, it died. Uh, I'll look into that later. I just want to open this package. So, I got you strapped on my, the phone strapped on my tripod I cannot change the I can zoom can do anything so this is what you get cup of coffee and the package oh sure all over why not um gosh there's a lot of tape in there I have ordered from them slash him before. So, uh, did a lot of emailing and uh, so they know it has to go to Bonaire and they always take extra care to wrap it up really good. A while ago I noticed that my kiln was taking a bit longer than usual. So that's... Um, was the first thing to order as soon as I could. As soon as I had the money for it, I ordered new elements. Those are in there. Those are, of course, very important and very necessary. It's not exactly what I'm so excited about. I have to now find a way to get... Where am I going to put all these? Uh, hold on, let me... Let me see. Um, I'm going to go get a box. Hold on. Back with the box. Beer. What else? Right. Um, because, of course, I'm saving all these pebbles. Are they called pebbles? I think so. For my own shipping. Not throwing that away. I'll put them in the box first and then I'll get back to you. Oh, they're almost all out. A little um, background story. These are the elements. Hello, my babies. And I order them from Jay. And this is his card. Shout out to Jay. Because um, I have a kiln from the Netherlands. Uh, they're a little bit different. And um, I didn't want to order new elements from them. Because it takes a long, 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 long time for them to get here. And um, well, yeah. Last time I ordered new ones from them. This That's a couple of years ago they they weren't as good they didn't last as long anymore so I went looking I came across Jay and we had a lot of um, um, communication conversations I, I sent him all the specifics of my kiln and uh, he said yeah I can make them for you so he literally makes these with his two hands for my kiln and he is so helpful um, about everything, you know, uh, um, ohms, um, uh, amperages, the whole thing. So, Jay, I thank you very much. I will um, install them in the near future with help from my hubby. Uh, it's a bit fiddly and of course it's very important that it goes right. I, I mean, it's not rocket science, but still. 
So um, my kiln is still firing okay. It takes a little bit longer. I don't have to quite just yet change them out. Last time um, my firings were taking up to 14 hours and that's ridiculous. So I really had to wait for the new elements. Now I don't. I'm prepared. Okay, the exciting thing. Oh, we have a we have a whole uh, booklet. Oh, nice. How oh, nice. I'll be going through that later. Oh, oh, as you know, I do a lot of scraffito. I'm always trying out um, uh, different ways to carve through the clay. Is this? Yeah, this is it. And um, I wasn't that very happy with the diamond core tools because I also carve, of course, in my coarse clay and, and they just wear away too fast. And um, I also need, needed new trimming tools. So, this is the first time I bought that one. Xim, Xiem, I don't know how to pronounce it. So I'm going to test these for trimming. I like that. Can you see the shape in there? I hope you can. <laughs> I like that shape for trimming. And uh, at the same company, they make trimming tools as well. So I have never ever used these before. They are very light. Oh my word. Double tipped. Yes, they're sharp. Why am I whispering? I don't know. <laughs> oh, feather light. Oh my word. Very excited. And this is Kemper, right? Hold on. Uh, yeah, these are Kemper tools. I have a bunch of them. But they really are getting old, and uh, I have to sort them. There are still a few in there that are sharp, but they have weird shapes. And those, these shapes, especially the rounded ones, I use the most, and those are all just... I've, I've used them a long, 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 long time. They last long. Not as long as other ones, maybe, but for all the scraffito that I do, this investment is very good. So... Two new camper tools, two new trimming tools by Jay, and a seam. Unfortunately, I did all my trimming yesterday. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to throw some pots. Oh boy, happy, happy day. I'm going to flip through this one with a cup of coffee. And um, what I actually should do do some glazing. I don't want to. Okay, people. See you in the next clip.